What should journalists anywhere do? The only answer is speak truth to power. That is what the organized crime and corruption reporting project, OCCRP in short, does. This OCCRP is an initiative of a global journalist network and it exposes the natures behind the financial crimes across the globe. That network came out with a devastating piece of investigation into the shenanigans of stock manipulation by India's top business house, Adani Group. It revealed how the regulator, SEBI, the Securities and Exchange Board of India, then headed by UK Sinha, looked the other way while the share prices of Adani Group companies went soaring through the roof. The report highlights how UK Sinha did a telltale cover-up job. Despite the whistleblowing by the government's own Directorate of Revenue Intelligence, the DRI in short. The OCCRP investigation uncovers for the first time the correspondence between the Director General of the D DRI, Directorate of Revenue Intelligence, and the SEBI chief in 2014 on the manipulations by the Adani group of companies in the stock market. That was January 2014. The DRI chief had in fact sent a CD to the SEBI chief, a CD which established that there was over invoicing of capital equipment imports against Adani power projects. Dear I chief had then specifically mentioned in his letter, and let me quote him, there are indications that a part of the siphon of money may have found its way to stock markets in India as investment and disinvestment in the Adani group. The SEBI chief, UK Sina, was possibly a good predictor of the political weather. He sat over the letters. A few months later, the government changed. Manmohan Singh led UPA was booted out and Narendra Modi led BJP came to power. SEBI chief, UK Sina, the ace trapeze artist possibly knew about the equations between the controversial industrial house and the newly elected popular leader of the country. No wonder. He dismissed the DRI allegations and closed the investigations into the Adani group a couple of months later. Mr. Sina had to be rewarded for his service. It's not surprising that UK Sina got an extension as a SEBI chief, even after he had completed five years in the job. It's clear now, after the OCCRP report released two days ago, as to why Sinha was also a darling bureaucrat of the Adani group. No wonder UK Sinha is today serving as the independent director and non-executive chairperson of the NDTV after this national television channel was acquired by the Adani group. 
But then UTC now is not alone in doing this shady cover-up job. It appears successive SEBI chiefs have been enthralled to the Adani group. Take the case of the current SEBI chief. The Supreme Court is investigating the Adani stock manipulation case after the explosive revelations by the Hindenburg research in March this year. The SEBI has made several submissions to the Supreme Court in this matter. But the SEBI has not disclosed the receipt of letter from the DRI chief about the Adani Group's stock manipulation allegations way back in 2014. In fact, the SEBI under the current chief, Madhavi Puri Bush, had categorically stated before the expert committee appointed by the Supreme Court that investigations into the Adani group only started in October 2020 after receipt of complaints in June, July that year. But now that OCCRP has come out with a startling revelation about the DRI letter written by its chief in 2014, the SEBI stands thoroughly exposed. Prashanjit Bosch, in a well-argued piece in the Hindu last Friday, means no words when he said that SEBI has suppressed facts and provided false information to the apex court which amounts to perjury. He also mentioned that the SEBI has already been indicted by the Supreme Court appointed expert committee for amending the listing obligations and also the disclosure obligations with regard to the API, foreign portfolio investment. This amendment, mind you, was carried out by the SEBI in 2018, which opened up regulatory loopholes facilitating concealment of ultimate beneficiary ownership of APIs. Why was it done? One can add two and two. Adani Group was a prime beneficiary of this amendment, as the OCCRP report conclusively proves. What conclusion do we draw? As Prashanjit Bose writes, all the evidences suggest that SEBI's lapses were not just regulatory failure. It was a classic case of regulatory capture. The, regulatory, the regulator having been under the thumb of a top business group closely allied to the ruling establishment of the country. After all this, what should we say? Let us chant, Mera Bharat Mahan.